December 17th. Just the first look at the hive, there's quite a bit of activity. Just take a quick look in here. Saw some bees getting water from in here. Okay, there's one right there in the middle. Pretty cool for them to have access to something like this on a roof. They're collecting water there. Good bit of activity here. Our girls at home have been bringing in a lot of pollen. Yep, pollen coming in. All right. So the goal today is we'll go through this so we can get this stuff stored. Hopefully the top's been open enough that there's no wax moth issues. We need to fix the frame in the bottom of this one and just since we're gonna be in there, make sure everything's okay. Remember we had a tiny bit of what appeared to be slimed honey. So all we're gonna do is tip that up and look from the bottom to, to see if there's any issues. What probably happened is they probably cleaned it out and got it out of the hive and it's probably fine. Uh, I don't see any activity for small hive beetles, slime or anything out the front. Everything looks really tidy out front. So that's a very good sign that everything's fine. Yep. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll start right in here and see what we got. And yeah, can we prop that open to hopefully keep the wax moths out of it? Because it was undefended. Excellent. Yeah, pretty plain note. Yep. Yep, and there's no... So, actually, right in there is wax moth damage. You see how it looks like webbing? Mm hmm That's wax moth damage, so... Sure, you can see that on the camera there. Just need to make sure there's not too much of that. Um, so if they're in there, we can poke around there, in there and kill them. If they're just small, we can put them in a freezer or a refrigerator for a couple days and then take them out. Um, but unfortunately I was in somebody's the other day and they didn't pull theirs out and the entire side was webbing. And when you pulled it off, all the comb comes off the foundation. But now this is fine. So what you're seeing is the torn cappings. Mm -hmm. It must have been where it got robbed out. I got you. No issues there. So is this wax usable? Absolutely, yeah. We're going to just leave everything in here and they'll fix what they need to and they'll make it however they need to. Yeah, and then, so there is some webbing in here and if you notice the, this is where the pupil casings were. That's why it's dark brown. Mm -hmm. Wax moth love that. Do you notice how they almost stop when they get to the edge of that? Yeah. So they're just, they're hanging right there. So there, there is a little bit of damage. It doesn't seem to be a lot. It's surprising. We're not really quite to the middle yet either, but there wasn't a lot of uh, brood comb in this hive either so so you don't really have access to refrigerators or freezers do you i do oh you do oh uh, yeah it depends on how much space i need but do you think you could be we could put this in that tote and just put it in there for like two three days and then that's it that's all yeah, we need should be fine. all we need to do is is kill what's in here and then that's an assassin bug interesting yeah, assassin bug. And then this is some of the brood that didn't hatch out, but the colony was collapsing there, so. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it looks like we can save the comb and they'll be able to fix this and use this next year. Yeah, no, this is very minimal damage. Like I said, the other one I saw, the whole front was like that and, the, and you just touched it and the whole face fell off all the way back down to the foundation, so. Since we propped the lid and had a little bit of sunlight in there, that probably helped out quite a bit. And maybe being on the roof helps as well. Yeah, see there's a little bit in there. And see the little brown in there? That's the frass, that's their poop. Um, sometimes if you have the little bottom trays and stuff, you can see that those little specks and stuff down in there. Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't typically see that unless it's a weak hive. And again, obviously there was nothing in here, so. They're just decomposers doing what they're supposed to do. I'm gonna put the frames back in here for now. Okay. And then we can take that in. And then if it doesn't fit inside the tote, we'll just put the frames individually in the tote. All right. But everything looks fine in there, so should be good. Uh, you wanna go ahead and check your smoker and make sure it's still smoking before we get into this next piece.
That's probably good. Check around the top. Swiper. Uh. Ooh, that sounded like something was about to fall, didn't it? Say again? It sounded like a tree was cracking. Oh, yeah. maybe it was somebody. I think that was just them clapping or something. Oh, gotcha. I got it. Got it? Yeah. <clears throat> Have it ready. I'll go ahead and take the lid off. Have it ready in case they're up here where the oval is. Oh yeah, that's your hive is very strong. That's good to see them up here. It's very good to see them up here. Uh, we don't necessarily need to look in this one. We just want to see in the bottom. <clears throat> so, uh, um, are you okay if I set this on here, or do we want to put something? Let's use the other one because that one I can repaint. Got it. I have the repaint so. Yeah. Say so the white one comes off. Yeah. Do the white one and then just try to set it at an angle. Um, when you pop it off, we want to look underneath. So um, what I would like you to do is when you pop it, slide the box about two inches this way so that we can tip it up without it sliding off. Then we can look underneath of it. And then we probably don't need to go deep into this because that should just be reserves for them. I'm going to come around to your side so we can see the same thing. And again, sometimes when we inspect from the front, which is totally fine. We'll stop the bees up a little bit, but that's why you'll see them kind of in the air. Sometimes pull, pulling on the far side of the box too gives you a little more leverage to, to push in harder without it potentially slipping off. Gotcha. Okay, my tool's all the way on this corner. Yep, we're all the way in over here. It's just really stuck together. <clears throat> okay. And well, let's, let's go ahead and uh, lift it from the, the back there. It looks like this right side's coming up first. You just want to put your hand on that with a little bit of pressure. From this side? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take it this way, slide it that way. Sorry, take we're, it this we're way. Gonna, we're going to look at it from the back. We'll try to inspect from the back just for good practice. Okay. Looks like that side's up. And when you get to a certain point, you want to try to twist it a little bit because it may be the frames are stuck together and if you twist, it'll break them apart. There you go. It's okay. And then we'll just set that back down. And then what we want to do is tip it up on this end and you felt how heavy it was. Yeah. So the, the stores are great in here. We just want to make sure that... Yeah, I okay. Wait. So there was a little damage down here, but I don't see any issues here and they've got honey back in here. So there's, there's no problems with this. So we'll go ahead and set this whole thing off. So remember, there was a little patch. What I was looking for is to make sure there was no small high beetle sliming or anything like that, and the bees fixed the issue. It was a really small issue anyway, so you typically don't want to put any slime on a, a healthy hive, but since that was about maybe two or three inches in diameter, it's not a big deal. Okay. That'll work. This was your hive tool. Thank you. Um, again, I usually um, inspect the bottom box first and our, our main concern with seeing as many bees and many stores in here we probably don't need to get in this box at all okay. um, pull this box off we'll get to that frame so we can get that repaired and as we're working on repairing that we'll check the next couple frames and then we'll probably need to see what we need to see this hive looks really healthy so I'm anticipating a lot of weight on this one <laughs> Where it was already done before. Yeah, yeah. And this is solid, right? Oh, yeah, let me. So when I put these down, I typically try to put them kind of closer to this. Okay. Um, not a huge deal right now. It limits the amount of surface area, but the other way does too. What this does though is when you get two hives up here, you don't have robbing from one hive potentially coming to this one. It, it makes the gaps a little smaller. So again, lift and then a little bit of a twist. Yeah, you're definitely gonna need a twist on this one. Um, I'm gonna keep prying and then I'll try to keep this straight. Okay, you're coming up. So lift this side first as a, as a hinge and then we'll get ready to twist. Yep, we're coming, we're coming. Go ahead and grab it with the two two handles and then give it a little twist. Rock it this way and then twist. There you go, now twist. Perfect, perfect. 
and then you just set it a little off center on that one there you go as long as you got all corners on it we don't want it sitting on a frame over there i think you're probably okay i usually want to have it there so now you got your smoker uh it seems stable uh, i think that we're probably okay all right just to keep them calm since we're not inspecting in here i'm gonna keep these girls in the dark no need to smoke these girls we're not gonna we're not gonna affect them at all so all right um that's your hive tool again did you grab the um uh the little cup is here and everything's inside the cup hold on i got a stove here. inside yeah you see her nah, she's trying to get you see how she has her booty tucked yep she may have already gotten you well uh, that's okay i don't feel anything so good that's what matters all right i get this up here and your hammer um, we'll need to pull a couple of these frames out first, so we don't have our frame hanger, but we'll be able to set it down over here. I can grab it real quick. That's okay. I mean, we got we got space down here. Just you can always adapt. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. We're going for this one, so we probably only need to pull a couple of these out, um, just so we can get good access to that. And I think we'll be able to see what we need on these edge frames. There you go. I'll go ahead and oh, sorry, I assist on this side. It. And then go straight up. I'll let you do the grabbing. Got it. Hit it. Nice and easy. See what roll to me there? Yeah, look at that. I'm gonna hold this just for you. I see that girl with all her pollen on there. See her her legs are almost completely full of yeah. pollen. I saw a couple like that over here. That's too. awesome. And all that fresh yellow in there is pollen. And all of this back in here is all nectar. So there's something out that they're, that they're getting. Oh, that's really great. Cray myrtle would be the pollen. I don't know if it would be the nectar. The nectar, I have seen some uh, goldenrod, yep. which is pretty good. And that does have some uh, nectar. Here, Sometimes it's along the railroad tracks because they, they don't, they spray some, but not everything. So that's the only place that I usually see it besides where I planted it in my yard. but. That's like three plants, it's not gonna be enough for that. Looks good. Look good to you? Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, issues. Cat brood, lots of beautiful pollen over here and bee bread and then nectar and honey. Uh, that's, so cool. that's all we needed to see. So let me pull this one okay. and then if you can work on getting that outside one out so we can fix it. Just look at this one for the camera because that is absolutely beautiful. Most of that pollen's yellow too, so that's mostly probably from one source, probably a goldenrod. Cat brood. Look at all that cat brood. You still have drones in here. No, that's great. That's great. That means they have enough nutrition that they're keeping them around. As soon as there's a big enough dearth or they don't have enough resources, they kick them out. Um, Set that down. No queen on there, so not an issue. Uh, hey Siri, take a picture. We're in different gloves today. Golly, that's just beautiful. It's like a work of art right there. Yeah, I'm not sure if you remember in the spring, I had a picture that there was green pollen, there was blue pollen, there was like different, there was purple, there was pink, there was red. Cool. Now, diversity is really good for them, but uh, just the fact that they have pollen this time of year is somewhat common. It's just, it's, it's good that they're that healthy enough that they're, they're rocking out on the third frame. The fourth frame looks like it's very similar. Is that the one that had all the nails in it? Yeah, I've got them. Oh, you got them. Good. <laughs> it's like, oh no. Gonna... Here, let me uh, let me do a little another little shake on them just okay. to make sure we get them off. Oh, there. I got a nail. And uh, we'll have to think about what we're hammering on too. We may want to do this on the. Oh, I was gonna move it over here to the uh, plastic bin. Get all these girls off so that we're not. Or I mean, we can do it down here even. That's fine too. Something solid. I just. Uh... 
I was just going to do something that would dampen the noise as much as possible. Do you still have the wood piece by any chance? If we had the wood piece, it would be good to have it inside, at least to sort of have something solid in there. Let's just put this where this is supposed to be, and maybe we can rest this on the hang, on the frame rest, to keep the frame right for now. Again, we're gonna cycle this out in the spring. So if you can straighten that and just sort of get it so that the bottom edge is near where the bottom frame rest is gonna be, you should be able to hit some meat down there. Let me go get you a couple straight ones. That's, that works, yeah. Entirely temporary. It's not a lot of weight here. The honey was on the inside, right? Yeah. Okay. You want to scrape any of this off? Are you okay? Um, Just maybe a little, yeah, I'm a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to have to scrape a little bit. Oh, I get it. Yeah, there's a little on the edge here too. Mm -hmm. We'll just scrape that because that's where the frame was dropped down and resting on it. So if you can just push that out the entrance just as far as you can, just so it's out of the box and they'll be able to smash it the rest of the way out. And do you have an entrance reducer? Uh, I did on that one, on the one that was there. Um, okay. You probably have another one somewhere. Um, we just need to get this to the larger opening on the entrance. That's probably good. You looks like they're getting a little irritated with that. So make sure that we got good spacing on this. Hey, it works. That's what matters. Again, we're going to cycle this stuff out in the spring. This is our next one. Which one? Yeah, put that one in next. That's the one that's closer to the middle. Hey Siri, take a photo. Yeah. Great. Good job. Take a picture of that work around that we created. Be for the next presentation. Yeah, How exactly. To do things when you didn't in the field, in the field, <laughs> prepare for anything, and time, yeah. you're not going to expect it. You're not going to be able to prepare for everything. <laughs> but nice and slow when the bees are right here, and they'll, they'll slowly walk out. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I, I just well, I was say, is there a way can you can can you move this one closer to the wall? This one? Yeah. Good over here. Yeah. Now, uh, when your backup plans uh, need backup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to prepare for anything, but uh, oh, he got it. Did it get you? I don't think so, but it's got inside there. Uh, do you have that plunger? Yeah, this is tight in here. All right, do I need to take this off? Uh, if you want to, you can. I, it probably doesn't matter this time of year. They're probably going to rebuild it. I don't know how many more times we're going to get in here. Um, with how well the hive is doing, last time we did a mite check, there was zero. I don't know that we have much else to do. So the only problem with leaving stuff is where the bees are, and we put the box back on. But since there's two of us, I can smoke them off of that while you put this box back on it. So, Or, or vice versa, or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Set that off. And just let's give them just a second to go down. Okay, go for it. On there same thing here so if you're gonna not scrape it which is fine and this time of year I wouldn't necessarily need it just smoke them down so they're not in the way there you go um, actually this time of year we probably don't need to have the lid propped anymore Temperature wise, okay. we'll just set it flat down on there. So I'm gonna get just get her off. And if you want a taste of that, you surely can. But that's it. Yep. Um, can you pass it out? Let me uh, just pass me the whole thing and I'll uh, 
dump that off into. Perfect. You want the propolis or? No, I'm good. I'm just gonna get out of there. And yeah, so we'll set this one down so that it's just flat on top. No propping. There you go. So they can still have that little space. It's just an attic space to temper some of the temperature there. And sometimes the notch allows them to circulate through. It doesn't have a notch, so there's no issues there. And then we'll put a weight on it. We should be good. So um, I honestly don't know that you need to get back in this hive. Uh, usually October is about the last time I'll go get into mine. Um, you surely can if we need to. Uh, a lot is going to be said by the entrance. Um, when they're bringing in pollen, they're typically bringing it in to feed babies. Where should I put the reducer on? Um, I would put it on as soon as you find it. <laughs>